Namaskar. I'm very grateful to IDMA and Muddabhai to invite me to say a few words at the launch of IDMA NSF Advanced Program in Pharmaceutical Quality Management. I believe this is a very important program and I wish to share some words on why I believe it's so important. It is a step forward to build Brand India that IDMA has been seeking and supporting. It is an extensive program. Uh, it is modeled after uh, the qualified person program to in part, but it is taking a broader view of a quality systems approach. And uh, it is uh, uh, it includes not only didactic, but uh, also uh, programs that will help build uh, interpersonal and intrapersonal um, strengths of the people who will participate in this. So in that context, uh, uh, I, I wish to emphasize that um, human development, adult human development occurs in stages. And uh, in my way of thinking within the context of pharmaceutical quality system, reactions to actions is human development and the mechanism by which this occurs is when we take what is subjective to us and make it objective the subjective to objective transformation is achieved via reflection and that reflection must be guided by epistemology how do you know what you know your reflection has to be sound of scientific ba scientific basis and without reflecting with sound scientific information epistemology how do you know what you know um, you don't uh, correctly convert things which are subjective to us into objective so that we can make sound rational scientific decisions i think the quote which is often very useful for me to remember this between stimulus and response there is a space in that space is our power to choose our response in our response lies our growth and our freedom i think that is the summation of adult human development that quote often is attributed to victor frankl um, uh, a amazing strong human being who survived um, uh, the concentration camp and um, uh, th that life is amazing being good is not sufficient for quality by design and uh, neither it is sufficient to build an effective pharmaceutical quality ma management system we must aim higher to help uh, me understand at stages of adult human develop in very simple ways i use this um, uh, uh, russian um, a doll model um, in which um, uh, one can see uh, the development as uh, as uh, being a adolescent procrustious behavior you know me 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 everything sentence around me and uh, uh, then we want to have we have the peer pressure and we want to look good and then we we mature further on you want to be good within the society, follow the rules and regulations. But then we build an internal self-validation of what is good and we want to do good beyond what uh, the societal expectations are. And then we mature further um, of seeing good in things which may not appear to be good and to find solutions uh, for societal benefit. So doing good is a stage of adult human development where systems thinking and systems orientation and appreciation for a system begins. And seeing good is a more mature phase where we can think about multiple systems and yet uh, function effectively to find solutions that are good for the society. Let's begin with that as a model to think about our adult human development and we will focus uh, how that translates to professional development, particularly in the context of quality assurance and quality management system. 
let me suggest that some adults continue to develop but at different rates many do not that is well supported by scientific evidence collected in uh, fields such as uh, development psychology and adult human development and i'm concerned that the gxp environment we have created is inhibiting our professional development we don't take time to reflect and we don't pay attention to epistemology much of what i see happening around the world is uh, gmp remediation is the norm and in cgmp remediation uh, you hire external consultants uh, who actually perhaps don't even never manufactured a product in their life and uh, hire them to write your sops that is utterly nonsensical and utterly uh, procrastian uh, that's a very low order of consciousness and that's a very low order of development and that's the reason why i see um, i'm concerned that uh, our reliance on so-called gxp experts who have never manufactured a product in their life uh, uh, and having them write sops is a fundamental error uh, that occurs and it's a clear indication that our professional development has been retarded to a large extent some adults continue to develop but at different rates many do not i think that's the theme i wanted want to uh, build on if i take uh, if i refer to the constructive development theory of adult human development and looking at leadership potential and here is a distribution of 764 highly educated u.s corporate professionals in the same age demographic some adults develop to be exceptional leaders some do not so the level two uh, lead, uh, these are very intelligent people 10 percent of the adult population never goes beyond the adolescent uh, teenager uh, mindset and they are very they can be very intelligent and about 10 percent of the population of adults remains here and if they happen to be the ceo or or in a authoritative uh, position they will be atrocious leaders obviously they are not very effective and even at level three uh, we are somewhat effective effectiveness starts to come about um, with the maturity of level three to level four and perhaps uh, for pharmaceutical <clears throat> we need a critical mass of very effective level four and level five leaders and uh, uh, even at leaders at level three um, they can function moderately effective if the environment is routine known and stable that's we think uh, gmp environment is routine known and stable because we have validated our analytical methods we have validated our process therefore it should be routine known and stable it is far from that so the ostrich syndrome is holding back the pharmaceutical quality for the 21st century what is the ostrich syndrome it is burying our face in the sand if you remember ostriches are known to bury their face in the sand to avoid uh, when they are afraid or when they are threatened let us recognize how adults and corporations mature or not within our regulatory context and i have taken a maturity model going from managed defined measured and controlled management based regulations which we are currently under um, uh, we file first and figure it out with the cmc review staff and we go through multiple review cycles um, and uh, we have warning letters and import alerts um, uh, although we characterize our development uh, but it is per cmc review demands what happens then is uh, we we use the defaults 10x uh, three batch for process qualification and we do everything uh, to make sure we succeed in those things and then transfer or throw over uh, the technology and knowledge to from r d to operations and uh, there uh, we don't want to look bad and we find a way to uh, continue since it's fda approved it's fda validated uh, we have all the problems of cheating by design trial injection testing into compliance 
that's a second order of development or consciousness uh, at the adult level, individual levels, and at the corporate level. And a large segment of the industry is stuck here. Uh, the second uh, further development is we have defined, uh, characterized, we are a bit more proactive, we are anticipating, but we are focused on using compendial uh, test as a batch release test, which compendial tests were never designed for batch release tests, particularly in the US. I think you have to look at the legacy of compendial use between US and Europe, which is quite different. And, um, and here, uh, what was intended for a sample, we use the same wording, no unit shall be outside something, uh, some range uh, for the batch which is amazingly incorrect and yet we keep doing that and we have built-in common cause variabilities that uh, have no correction uh, and we get into OS investigations and we don't know the difference between common cause and special cause. We really want to mature to be science-based and risk-based and this is where quality by design uh, comes in. This is where higher assurance of quality is achieved. This also includes real-time controls uh, and state statistical process control. And we can only improve a manufacturing process when it is in a state of control. Um, and that's uh, that requires a fourth order of consciousness, a fourth order of development. And we must recognize that within an organization, you need a critical mass of fourth plus order of consciousness at industry and an FDA. And this is necessary for PQS and performance-based regulations, which I think are needed uh, as we move forward. So what are the stages of uh, uh, pharma development pertinent to pharmaceutical quality system? Um, building on the constructive development theory uh, from Professor Keegan at Harvard and his concept of immunity to change, I recently examined uh, the Six Sigma journey of Amgen Corporation, which, uh, which I have published on my LinkedIn website. And from that, uh, it was very clear that Amgen um, in the year 2003, four was stuck in a mode of, if I don't look, there is no problem. And uh, leaders within Amgen um, said, we cannot continue that. Uh, investigations matter. We are here to serve the patients and then they moved into a problem solving mode and to a prevention of error mode and they built a mechanism to move towards uh, Six Sigma, not the methodology, but the 3.4 uh, defect per uh, million opportunity number and Amgen is now close to a Six Sigma company in terms of the number of defects uh, of less than or equal to less than 3.4 defects per million opportunities. And um, this fits in very well with the constructive development theory of adult human development. Um, there were the, 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 the system at Amgen, although one or two people may be at a higher order of consciousness or uh, leadership, but the overall system was at the third order. And similarly, I have used the phrase from Pfizer when Pfizer came to FDA science board meeting in the year 2001. When at the launch of the P18 initiative, Pfizer publicly said they have adopted a don't use and don't tell approach to new technology. Uh, and and uh, so these are the phrases which fit in very well with uh, uh, a socialized mind of you know, the pharmaceutical industry. Tell me FDA what to do, I will do it. Uh, F this is FDA approved, so there's no problem now. Uh, so these are the change prevention system and the feeling systems which uh, give comfort. So oh, it's FDA approved, so everything is okay. Uh, and that becomes our immunity to change. But then we have to move into taking responsibility for quality and to solve problems and to solve problems correctly and not say root cause unknown and blame the poor analyst. Uh, and for that, we need to know uh, how to solve problems and how to get to root cause and to get to root cause and not simply blame the analyst. Uh, uh, we have to understand the difference between common cause and special cause variability. But since our sample size are based on the compendial methods and so forth, uh, any additional testing has the risk of becoming testing into compliance. Our root cause investigations are often, often very ineffective and about 90 96% of the time root causes 
unknown. Don't you see that exactly coincides with Dr. Deming's uh, assertion that uh, most of the problems are common cause variability? About 94 to 97% of the causes are common causes and for which there is no uh, corrective action and preventive action. Just you have to re rebuild the system, strengthen the system. And so therefore, I think uh, <clears throat> Uh, stages of adult human development and assurance of quality and effectiveness of pharmaceutical quality system are very, very much uh, integ integral uh, to our development. So in, in the current situation of 21st century pharmaceutical quality for the 21st century, um, uh, uh, all the guidelines are in place in ICH. Uh, I think uh, the process validation US guideline is far uh, more focused on statistical process control, which I like, and um, and I think uh, we have some legacy problems. So uh, our development, quality by design development, has to be based on totality of evidence to provide predictability uh, in our scale up and technology transfer, and and so that in a commercial setting, our analytical methods and our processes are stable and capable. And really that's uh, what we have to bring together uh, in terms of uh, quality assurance in the 21st century. And to do that, we have to take a systems approach, a life cycle approach to everything we do. ICHQ10 outlined a very simple model for pharmaceutical quality system. GMPs in and of it themselves are not systems. A, a folder of SOPs and policies does not make it a system. It, to, to be a system, we have to understand that system is made up of parts that interact and through interaction, um, we have uh, emergent uh, properties that have to be addressed. And uh, each SOP is interlinked to other SOPs and each policy is linked to other policies. And simply having a GMP expert write the SOPs is, uh, is, does not take into consideration the need to adapt those to the environment. And therefore, I think we have to think about uh, adaptive learning uh, and as well as technical learning. There are two aspects of learning and knowledge that we have to bring together. The PQS elements focus on performance, CARPA, uh, management review, change management, uh, um, and the enablers are knowledge management and quality risk management. Knowledge management is uh, very poorly done in the pharmaceutical sector and our risk literacy uh, is also very poor. So I think we have to work on these elements to build an effective quality management system. I think on paper, ICH guidelines, uh, regulatory guidelines, provide a summation of the knowledge that we have accumulated. That's fairly good. And, but our practices are far from uh, uh, applying those uh, things. For example, uh, if I bring an example of systems thinking to ICH, CTDQ, um, and, and relate those two uh, PQS enablers and elements in ICH Q10, one can look at the development report as follows. I think section 2.1.1 uh, of drug substance, uh, 2.2. Uh, 2.1.1 point, uh, of drug substance has to relate to 2.2.1 of formulation development. So uh, the key physio physical, chemical and biological characteristics of drug substance that can influence the performance of the drug product and its manufacturability should be identified and discussed. But much of what, what we do is uh, we have a DMF, we have this, we have that, the interconnectivity of knowledge and, and information is lost and we don't, have, we don't build a critical understanding we don't take a systems perspective and that's uh, a sign of our development being stuck at the third order so many of the root causes may be uh, of OSS may often be built in R&D and CMC review we don't even know that uh, they have we have cognitive biases we work under a knowledge illusion we have a business model of file first figure it out later and fda approved and validated often a good reason for rationalization or to say chalta hai and so chalta hai has become the norm and uh, we rely on 
so-called FDA approved and FDA validated, FDA inspected as the words to give us comfort, like an ostrich uh, putting his head uh, in the sand and saying, oh, this is FDA approved, this is validated, so I had nothing to worry about. So in, I'm hoping this, this program, this education program, will give you opportunity for analysis, deeper understanding of analysis and of, of the in, information that you will receive. But it will also give you an opportunity to synthesize, connect the dots of different parts of the modules that, uh, so that you become a self-author. Uh, we need to be self-authored in everything we do. And not cut and paste, not copy, not cut and paste and copy and say this is this is our SOP. Write the SOP from our heart. Write it in a clear way that as we understand it. Uh, let's not worry about it's not uh, the the grammar is not that great and those those things can be corrected. We need to be self-authored at every job function we do. A operator working in a factory floor should write his or her own SOP. Uh, a CEO should write his his or her new policies. Uh, I think that's what I think really is a systems orientation and the maturity that we need to bring. So I think we recently did a, a training program at Sun Farm, and, and that's what we tried to achieve is an overall capstone objective of connecting the dots, uh, recognizing that time, cost, and complexity pressures are there between functions. So there are gaps within function, and so effective PQS uh, uh, means you have quality by design to CPV uh, within the context of an effective PQS. Uh, not, uh, um, not go about doing QBD, 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 uh, like, like we do uh, play Kabaddi, and not uh, simply say, oh, I have a, a software, let me put a design of experiment uh, and, and run a design of experiment without thinking what questions we are asking. And, and, and then when we transfer the knowledge and technology, uh, the assumptions of the default, the 10x and 3x, uh, those were simply defaults. And uh, do they apply to a product has to be asked. How do you know what you know? Epistemology. Uh, how do you know what you know is an important question and you need to take time to reflect and with, with uh, the correct information to be able to grow. So here is a bit more information about stages of adult development, the order of consciousness, as Professor Keegan called it. I'm not including the second order here, but I, I will remind you 10% of the population of adults never regrow, uh, and those, those, those have Procrustean uh, attitudes, me, 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 and many CEOs often become uh, are of, the, of that order, and so that's a very selfish attitude. And they are atrocious leaders. I'm not going to talk about them at the moment, but you have to recognize they exist and they exist quite, quite significantly. But let's talk about third order of consciousness, which is the of, uh, so the mindset is being socialized. I want to belong. Um, uh, and the leadership uh, aspect is they are very in ineffective leaders. They're not leaders. And in the regulatory context, FDA approved all okay. And they simply seek, tell me FDA what to do or tell me it's ex-FDA GMP expert what to do. And they rely, they have no self-confidence or very little self-confidence, internal confidence, internal validation. They're seeking external validation. If you're in this uh, stage, uh, recognize it internally, but then use this program to develop, to become self-authored. We have to think about cognitive, interpersonal, and inter intrapersonal and interpersonal. I think um, at this level, we are more interested in mending relationship. Oh, I look bad, or he doesn't like me, or she doesn't like me, and I want to mend my relationships. We are worried about how do we look good, or do we look bad? Uh, we are just worried about those things. That level um, of uh, uh, clearly a majority of our colleagues and so forth will be at that level. But uh, uh, for effective quality management system, uh, we need a critical mass of leaders uh, who are self-authored. And uh, at the fourth order of consciousness, uh, fourth order of leadership, we become self-authored. And, um, and here our leadership effectiveness improves. And here we say, yes, FD approved, but, but we are responsible for quality. We, we take a, a problem solving systems orientation and approach. Uh, and we ask our question, did I achieve my goals? Uh, did I follow a methodology which is sound? Um, and, and not simply uh, uh, do shortcuts here and there. 
clearly i think we do also need people who are self transforming these are exceptional leaders and our quality standards must be better than minimal standards this is what they the attitude they will have we they explore options for prevention of problem they think of systems of systems so i say all right we recognize that the risk tolerance in india and us are different um, but uh, but uh, do we have two quality systems one for indians one for americans uh, no we we have one quality system for americans and one quality system for indians the the approach uh, the 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 criteria for quality assessment might be different because of different regulatory scheme but our intention our our approach to quality and our our integrity is the same for indians as americans and so forth and here we we focus on did i achieve a valid outcome and do we be here we value and learn from conflict so fourth order consciousness is minimum uh, for the leaders of quality such as yourself who are taking this course is necessary and you have to support uh, when you go back to your organization that each and every person is becoming self authored at at their level of their job description so you have to become mentors you have to become coaches you have to become coaches for the people on the front line but also for your ceos uh so think about it from that perspective each and every person has to be self authored uh, to to really have build an effective quality management system so i'm hoping as as you go through this program uh you will clearly have build uh, cognitive competencies um, you'll have scientific and technical and risk assessment type of skills but also please focus on intrapersonal competencies take time to reflect uh so how do you do improve your self management and ability to regulate your own behavior and emotions to reach the goals and this is where internal meditation reflection uh, reflection with the epistemology uh, with the right thoughts the correct thoughts uh, that shape your emotions shape your feelings are critical here so take time to reflect during these uh, these uh, educational program the opportunities that you have but also Uh, build your interpersonal competencies of working together even if you don't like an idea that someone is is proposing listen carefully uh, listen to understand not listen to respond uh, listen to understand and uh, adopt an and uh, uh, attitude how do i accommodate a, a position or a opinion which is different from mine but bring those two together to to bring about something which is better than the both positions and is the operating word here not or so build on your interpersonal competencies so and and you have to synthesize across the three dimensions and i'm hoping uh, the organizations that are supporting this would link uh, the development of people in this program to their hr system of operational excellence and other things i think this is an important connection so professional development stages are looking good being good these are not sufficient you have to move towards doing good to be being good uh in the context of gxp and how these relate to societal needs so so i think uh, uh i'm really really uh, excited to support this program of idma and nsf that mudabai has been so diligent in trying to develop um uh, my my way of thinking is every person in the pharmaceutical organization has to be a qualified person uh i know the european system is a qualified person is one individual i don't um, and that's that's a step in the right direction but from a systems perspective for me every person has to be on a path to becoming a qualified person if you're not qualified why the hell are you in pharmaceutical business uh, that's the way i look at it so uh, so be the change cause the desired effect and uh, remember we are we are today searching for uh, 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 um, quality metrics which are most of them are lagging indicators you are here to focus on becoming a leading indicator to cause the desired effect education training and experience your technical competency your risk literacy your systems orientation um, really is a combination of your technical know how with your adaptive experience knowledge uh, adaptive knowledge gained by experience and collectively it has to bring you to becoming a self authored uh, level of development at least a fourth order of consciousness so because remember 
Gandhiji said, be the change you want to see in the world. And Einstein reminded us, you cannot solve problems with the same order of consciousness you're using to create the problems of today. Um, so, and uh, therefore you need to have a higher order of consciousness. Um, uh, uh, so be the change, as Gandhiji said, and use this time to uh, really develop yourself to a higher order of consciousness. Uh, minimum fourth order of consciousness is what I expect you will achieve, and I wish you the best. Thank you.